Lord. Okay. What do you see? Chomps. Okay. These are six elements that are necessary to make up all the molecules that we call biomolecules. All right. But let's but before we do that, let's see if we uh, we use the word macromolecule and biomolecule. But and there's there's there's, a, there's they are again. And see how I've underlined three of them. That's kind of be important for later. Now let's see if we get a frame of reference. All right. Look, this is a big big molecule. By the time we're done, we expect you to be able to tell us the name of the big four macromolecules. We expect you to be able to tell us what elements make them up and uh, their basic function. Describe their structure. Later on, we'll add in a structure. But this does this looks kind of heavy duty, right? This, if you the, the separate the chaos of oh that looks so really big and complicated, then recognize a pattern. So first, see where I'm holding it, like? It looks like there's actually three carbons there. And then after coming off this carbon is another chain. And then this middle one has a chain. And this one has a chain. I'll, I'll do a video later where I go into each one of the molecules and, and uh, show what they are. This is actually the molecule that we call a lipid. This is fat. That is glucose. It's Gonna, a bunch of these are going to strain together to make starch. Okay, this represents an amino acid. Now, again, recognizing pattern, if you'll notice, it has a central carbon and it actually has four parts. And we'll write this down later. This part, this one, the simple hydrogen, and then this actually is something called an R group that could be as big as. Um, a whole other molecule. It could be that R group could be something this large. It could be something this large. Well, maybe not that big, but and there's 20 different amino acids because there's 20 different combinations that go in this slot. So if you know in math we use like a variable, so that's what the R represents. Now at this point we haven't copied any notes down. We are getting there, but let's do one other thing. And this actually helped um, the other class. Let's officially define what is organic. All right. So what I want to do is. Throw out some molecules, and I'm going to move this over here. Hey, all right. So first, let me use this glucose. If I'm going to be using these to help you guys learn this, you got to know what they represent. So what? Let's I do that first. What colors? What's what's black? Carbon. Red is oxygen, and white is hydrogen. That's important to understand that. Um, so let's line some of these up here. We got that one. There, the blue is going to be nitrogen. You notice it's not in this molecule, it's not in that molecule, but it is in this one that is the amino acid. One I haven't showed you is nucleic acids, which also has this. All right, so we'll, let's do this. Uh, and wait, let's trade that out for some water. All right, which one of these molecules are organic? Which ones? This one, this one, this one, yeah, that one, and let me put this in view. So we've got a couple molecules here, and I'm going to add in this. So which ones are organic? Now assume there's an H on that, that's, but I just had to take it off my other molecule. Yes. Um, wait, there's more than one? Yeah. All right, so we'll say that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So, um, I'll take one. The top one? Uh, the one on the top, yeah. That's, that's organic? Yes. Okay, what about this? Uh, that is organic. Okay, it's got carbon and hydrogen. Okay. Nitrogen, is that organic? No. Uh, what about water? Yeah. No. What about this? This is two oxygens here, like O2, what we breathe in. <gasps> there we go. And then this one, we exhale it, carbon dioxide. Is that organic? No. Everything I learned is a lie. Okay. In order to be organic, I'm going to take out all the ones that are not organic. Wow. Uh -huh. 
the carbon, it's got to have carbon to be organic. No, in order to be organic, it has to have carbon and oxygen. So let's start there. And let's do this. I'm going to, just to save a little time, I'm going to pause the video while we do this, copy down some of the notes. So now that we're going to, we've established that in order to be organic, it has to have at least carbon and hydrogen. One of the things we're going to find out with the macromolecules that make up living things, they all have at least CH and O. Let's go to, back to this, all right? So remember I, earlier we said chomps. Do you see more than CH and O there? Okay, we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Big picture, we expect you to say, a, you show a molecule and you tell us which elements they make up. So this is why the kind of the title of your notes really is macromolecules or also called bi biomolecules. And these are the six elements. You notice how we've underlined right here CH and O? Because they all have CH and O. Some have nitrogen. Some have nitrogen and phosphorus, some have nitrogen and sulfur. Right? So we're gonna we're gonna systematically go through this. And you know what systematically because we're thinking about we're talking about a molecule. We talk about big molecule, small molecule, and they actually make there's four distinct macromolecules. All right? Before we mention the distinct macromolecules, um, you don't need to copy this down, just a reminder, carbon is the backbone for all this because of those four valence electrons. Okay. And now, let's go ahead and I'm going to stop the video once we do this, but I want to elaborate. This is where we're going. We need to know this structure called polymer and monomer. Polymer and monomer. So before you, I'm going to switch slides for a second, have you look at it, and then we're going to copy this down on this slide. So let's see if we can recognize this. All right. Now, we're going to copy on the next slide. Let's just read through this. This says macromolecules are built by linking a set of monomers. I'm going to also call that subunits. These monomers form chains. So if you look over here, this is a monomer, but this is a polymer. It's a bunch of re repeating units. Does that make sense? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different patterns we see. Now, take a look at this, and then we'll, we'll finish with the slides. All right, take a look over here. This is a monosaccharide. That's one of the big four we're going to talk about. Sorry. So we have a monosaccharide, put a bunch of them together, we have a polysaccharide. We've got an amino acid. Put a bunch of them together and we have a polypeptide or a protein. Here's something, a nucleic acid. Put a bunch of them together and we have, well, we have, this is called a nucleotide. Put them together, we have a nucleic acid. Now, the one that's slightly different is, is lipids, but we'll get to that in a moment. So here's what we expect you to know. So I'm going to go back for that other one for you to copy down if I could find where I left off. Okay? So... We expect you to know the carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, the polymer name, and the monomer name, right? And the elements that make it up. Are there any questions? Okay, so we'll go and copy that down and then we just stop recording. <laughs>